Good morning. On the 9th of June, I was interviewed by Essex Gateway Radio in Basildon. Yes, I filmed it, so yes, you can watch it. Here it is. Enjoy. Woohoo! What about you? Yeah, very good. It's Did you say that it was It's just after half nine in the evening, is that right? It is 9.35pm. Right, so we'll just hold on for, we're, we're about um, a minute away now. Um, so I'm just going to uh, let you hear the music, which is playing out. And then in 45 seconds, I'll come to you and we'll just chat and see how we go. Sounds good. Okay, talk to you then. Now, have you ever thought, I'm fed up, why don't I just pack up, set up and travel the world? It's sort of a, a, a back of the mind thought for many people, but... So for that to become a reality, it takes quite a lot of steps. My next guest uh, decided to do just that after COVID and feeling a little bit um, uninspired, I think it's fair to say. This is uh, Sonia King, who is joining us from... Well, where are you, Sonia? I am in Chiang Mai, in the north of Thailand. So I need to say good evening rather than good afternoon. It is definitely good evening, yes. Oh, it's lovely to, to, to have you. And um, how long have you been where you are now? I've been here for, in Chiang Rai for seven days, but I've arrived in Thailand on the 31st of March. And so far you've been to which countries? I've been to New Zealand, Australia, Bali, Singapore, Malaysia and Thailand. And next? Vietnam. So just tell me when you decided and why you decided to, <laughs> to, to make this trip. Um, it was kind of a moment after COVID, everyone was feeling a bit down and a bit low and then the pubs reopened. So I'm just saying that we had a really good evening and my friend just said to me, you look quite low, you look quite down. And I'm like, I don't know what the matter is. She said, right, I've got a magic wand and any witch that you want can come true. And without thinking, I just said I would sell up and go traveling. And about nine to 10 months later, I had a one-way ticket to New Zealand. I'd sold my salon, which was in, I had for 11 years in Billericay. And off I went, one-way ticket to New Zealand. And I haven't looked back, I have to say. When I first left, I was a little, apprehensive i suppose is the right word best thing i've ever done what were you hoping to get out of it <laughs> i'm not sure i actually thought that far <laughs> um i don't know just i think i'd got into that rut nine times out of ten by five o'clock by the time i finished work i was at home in my pajamas and i just thought there's got to be more than this and so I just took a punt and thought, you know what? You only live once and I need to do something for me. So and this is what you chose to do. Um, so, so what was it like when you, you got on the plane with, uh, you know, a, a fairly small bag, you know, it's, just, it's not got your, 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 your life's belongings in it. And you're just traveling from country to country. You sit down, the bag's there and this is it. Um, How did you... How did I feel? I want to say I was excited, but I wasn't. I think there was there was a, a bit of a build up to it. And by the time the day came that I was ready to go, I was just so ready to go. I'd given up my house. I had sold my business. I'd sold every belonging that I own. <laughs> and I have a 40 litre backpack and a hand luggage bag. And off I went. My first stop is I went from Heathrow to Kuala Lumpur and I had a 13 hour layover. I was a bit like a rabbit in headlights when I got there. And then I went up to the Petronas Towers, had a look round, got my next flight, which was 10 and a half hours to Auckland in New Zealand. And then three days later, I jumped off the Sky Tower as a bungee, just to say, welcome to New Zealand and literally from that moment on yeah 
I set up a YouTube channel as well called Nan with a Backpack and I have literally documented every single mad adventure that I have and now looking back on it to see how far I've come and for my children and grandchildren to watch as well. It's brilliant. You must, you must miss them quite a lot. I do and that's the only drawback. But as we are talking now, you have video calls, FaceTime, Zoom, and to be honest, when I was working all the hours, we didn't actually get to have a face-on-face -face relationship. We tended to talk over video calls most of the time anyway, so yeah. How much do you miss of your home life? Do you miss your car, your TV, holding the hair dryer? Um, no, I have got a little confession. I did keep hold of my car. My son is looking after it for me just in case it all went a little bit pear-shaped and then I knew I could come back and do some mobile hairdressing. But yeah, I don't, I miss family and friends. I would do anything for a roast dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, but apart from that, no, my life is full. And if I can just try and convince somebody, even if it's just going on holiday or a long weekend trip, if they're on their own, just do it. I'm on my own and the people you meet while you're away, it's great. What's it like with the language barrier and, and you know, picking up people along the way? Because if you're not staying in a place for too long, then you know, it must be quite hard to make those connections. Uh, a lot of the time I'm staying in hostels. <laughs> um, so obviously you're in a room with a group of other people and okay, they are younger than my children most of the time. But I mean, even where I am at the moment, um, I'm in a private room at the moment, but I've met a few people. The lady that owns it doesn't speak a word of English, but I've got Google Translate on my side and yeah you just see how it goes each step and how far ahead are you, are you planning do you know how long you're going to be around for no um i purposely don't book too far in advance just because you get somewhere and sometimes you get there and think i don't want to stay here thankfully you've only booked one night or two nights and then you can move on but vice versa Sometimes you get somewhere and think, I love it. I want to stay for a week. So, yeah. And tell me what you'll be doing in Vietnam. I have just booked to do the Ha Shang Loop, which is a motorbike tour all round the top part of Vietnam. Um, I'm not actually riding the motorbike myself. I'm kind of cheating. I've got something called an Easy Rider, which is a local person who will be riding the motorbike and I will be sat on the back so I can sort of sit and relax and look at the beautiful scenery go past. Lastly then, your message to someone who's listening and feels rather inspired by, by your trip. I would say, just do it. Even if, if you're a bit worried, book a long weekend. My first ever trip on my own, I went to Ireland for three days and I had a fabulous time. It is such a beautiful country. Just even if you go to the next city over and spend a long weekend, go on your own and enjoy every minute. What's the YouTube channel called? It's called Nan with a Backpack. Okay, we'll look it up. Um, thanks very much, Sonia. Nice to see you. <laughs> thanks, John. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, by the way, I'm just about to, I would normally say bye-bye and everything, but I'm back to the travel update. So do you want to just hang around and hear all these roads you haven't heard of for a couple of years? Oh, that would be wonderful. Starting in Baston, busy at nevermain.com slash travel. That's great, Sonia. <laughs> well, well done now. How was that for you? Okay. It was great. Sorry, I'm an ex-hairdresser. I can talk for Britain. <laughs> No, I know it's perfect. It's exactly what we want. You know, we want to, be, you know, be able to get through things. I think. I think. Do you know what? I think we um, we cover quite a lot actually, and um, I, I I think I sort of ticked off everything I was going to, uh, you know, ask. So I think that was that, that was that was all okay. Did you have um, your your family listening? I did. My watch is going. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, is it? 
Oh, you, do you know Tina, who does the um, pancreatic cancer? Tina As Tina Asenheim. Yeah. yeah. She's one of my hairdressing clients, and she was listening oh, as well. <laughs> Cheers, okay, Carl. Well, look, perhaps we'll, we'll, we'll catch up a bit um, a, a bit later on in the trip, so we can we can I'm sure we can find a way to link up again. Fantastic. But, um, I suppose I'll, I'll I'll let you I'll let you head to bed. <laughs> All right, nice to see you. I'm going I'm going to have a beer now. <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> Cheers, Cheers John. Bye. Bye. I don't know how to hang up though. Oh, there we go. Oh my word. <laughs> wow. Well, I've just been on Essex Gateway Radio. That was so nice. And with that, I'm going to have a beer.